Hi everybody, it's Laura. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Today I have a layout that I made using the October My Creative Scrapbook Limited Edition Kit. The kit featured a really beautiful collection from 49 and Market called the Vintage Orchard Collection. However, when has there ever been a collection from 49 and Market that wasn't beautiful? I just think that all their collections are absolutely gorgeous and I really love the colors and the feel of fall. So I was really excited to see this really pretty fall collection. For this layout, I'm using one of the many My Creative Scrapbook cut files that are available to subscribers. I found there was a fall themed wreath and I think it's really beautiful and I thought it would go perfectly with these papers. I backed the wreath with a piece of pattern paper. You could see it off to the left of my mat. I also used a number of embellishments. I used some green embellishments and red embellishments that were solid. And then I also want to include yellow in this wreath. So I used one of the white journaling cards that had text on it and then I inked it with some distress oxide in fossilized amber because I like the idea of having red, green, yellow, and brown in the wreath. I think that that was a nice variety of fall colors. And then this is my photo. This is a photo of my daughter Danielle. I have it mounted on some white cardstock. I mount it again using that same rusty brown pattern paper that I used to back some of the leaves in the cut file. And then I also backed that with another very thin mat of white cardstock and I attached the layers together. And my photo measures approximately three and three quarter by five and a half inches. I trimmed it down from a four by six inch photo. There was some excess background that I didn't think was necessary and I thought that this was a better size to fit inside of this wreath. And then I thought that I would pop up the photo on a little bit of foam. So I used some fun foam that I had in my stash. And this just adds a small bit of dimension to the photo. I added some adhesive to the foam and also to the top and the bottom of the photo. And then I placed the photo right in the center of the cut file. And this is a photo of my daughter, Danielle. We went apple picking a couple of years ago. We were in upstate New York, and I know that a lot of people think of New York City when they hear New York, but New York State is filled with farmland. Once you get an hour or two outside of the city, there are very small towns, it's very rural, and like I said, there are a lot of farms. My family has been going to this farm to go apple picking for a very long time since the kids were really little. And then both of my daughters started going to college in this same town. And I never realized until they were in college that this farm is literally right down the road from where their college is. And we used to go apple picking there every single year. But lately, we've just been going every couple of years just to make sure that we don't lose that tradition. I used an EK Success punch and I punched out some photo corners from one of the ephemera pieces, one of the same pieces that I used to back the cut file, that green color that you could see in some of the leaves. And then I inked the edges. I used some Distress Ink and Vintage Photo and then I attached them down to all four corners. I also used one of the many titles that were included in the kit. I decided to use gather and I wasn't sure if gather meant gather like people gather together or if you're like gathering things like apples. And I decided that I wanted to use that title for this layout because my daughter's holding an apple and I figured even if it doesn't really make sense to use it for gathering fruit, it would make sense because we were all there that day even if it's not shown in this photo. There was something about this title. I liked the color. I liked the size of it. It just fit in that spot underneath the photo really well. And there were a couple of other embellishments that were included in this thickers pack. Some leaves and some acorns and branches. And I decided that I was going to include those and kind of scatter them around the wreath. These thicker titles are foam stickers. I really like those. I think that it's nice the way they have a little bit of dimension. Another plus is that they stick really well, much better than the regular thickers. But I decided to put a little piece of cardstock behind the title so that I could move it around. I wanted to make sure that I liked it where I planned on putting it before I attach it down. And sometimes you can't get these stickers back up again. So I was glad that I did that. I always like the option to adjust things. 
If you have been with me for a while, you know that I do like to try out different options on my pages. So I put two leaves underneath the title, and then I also included an acorn, and the rest of those embellishments got scattered around the wreath. So I was thinking that I had to add something else to the layout, and so I went to one of my favorite techniques, which is paper strips. I used some branding strips from the bottoms of the pattern paper. I also used a couple of strips of that rusty brown pattern paper that I used to mount the photo on. And then the red and the green papers, those are from the same ephemera pieces that I used to back the cut file and also make the photo corners with. And I needed something to attach the strips of paper down to. So I took a piece of thick white cardstock and I cut it in a three and a half inch square. And then I cut it from one corner to the opposite corner, making two large triangles. And then I cut those two large triangles in half. I also drew some lines on them, some vertical lines, just so that I would make sure that I didn't put any of the strips on crooked. And normally I would include that process of making the triangles in the video. However, it took me quite a while to figure out exactly how big I wanted to make them and how I wanted to cut it out of the paper. So I didn't want to include all of that in this video. It just would have taken too long. But all you have to know is I finally ended up cutting a square. Like I said, cutting it diagonally and then cutting those two triangles that resulted in half. And that worked out really well. That gave me four right triangles. And I used just a couple of strips of paper to cover all four of them. I made sure that I had some of each of the patterns that I was using represented on all four of these corners. But I didn't worry about the order. I wanted it to be kind of random. I roughly cut the excess strips off. And then I use my trimmer to make a nice clean line along all of the edges. I find that I can't really do that with my scissors. And if I cut the pieces too short, it makes it hard to cut them on my particular cutter. So I didn't cut too close to the edge when I cut them with my scissors. And then, like I said, I use the trimmer to give it a nice clean look. And then I use Distress Ink in Vintage Photo and I ink the edges of all of those triangles. I also cut out some white triangles to go behind them because I thought that since I had the cut file backed with pattern paper, it would look best to have a white border all along the edge that would kind of match in with the cut file. And you'll see what I mean in a minute, I think, when I put these on my layout. Well, now I have the corners all assembled with their white matting on them. And then I'm going to start attaching them down in the lower left-hand corner. And I think that you could see now that that white border kind of goes along with the cut file. It makes those corner pieces kind of match in with the rest of the layout. Not always, but sometimes when I am making a layout and there's a circle or something circular in the center, I like to find something to put in the four corners, and it's usually the same item. So this is one option. I like the idea of putting triangles in the corners. In the past, I've used scrolls or sometimes some floral arrangements in each of the four corners, and I feel like it makes the layout look a little bit more finished. Now I'm ready to add some finishing touches to the layout. I started off with some green jewels. These are very tiny, kind of iridescent, self-adhesive jewels, and I like that they were small. And on that same sheet, there were also some yellow jewels, and those were in a couple of different sizes. And I didn't have a ton of them, but I decided that I would just spread whatever yellow jewels I had around the wreath. And I think it added a nice little finishing touch to the wreath. I don't know what brand these jewels are. I wish I did because I really like them. I like the way they have a lot of iridescence to them. I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I think I got these from the table at the crop that I go to where people put out their unwanted supplies to resell. And there was a bag with a whole bunch of different jewels in it. And so I don't have the manufacturer, but I do really like these jewels. 
one of the pattern papers had a branding strip that was just a whole bunch of little bees, perfect for fussy cutting out, even though they were very tiny. I fussy cut out a number of them and then I inked the edges with Distress Ink and Vintage Photo. And now I'm adding those little bees all around the wreath. I think that's another nice finishing touch. I like the way it's a very small scale to contrast with some of the other elements on the page that are a little bit larger. And that's the last item that I add to the layout and the layout is complete. And here are a couple of close-ups. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video. It was kind of a quick one. In the description box, you'll find a link to the My Creative Scrapbook website where you could check out all of the beautiful kits that they have and you can order a subscription there. This is the limited edition kit, which is my personal favorite. I hope that you have a fantastic day and I hope that you get in a little bit of creative time soon. Thank you again so much for watching everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.